Hello everyone, in this video we are going to solve problem number 37 from chapter number 2 force vectors from the book of engineering mechanics the statics part by the RC Hibbler. In this example we are being asked to determine the resultant force acting on the plate and also we are being asked to determine the direction make it counterclockwise from the positive x axis. So let's solve this problem. So let's consider the plate on which these forces are acting. One of the force F1 which is making 0 degree with a positive it means in the direction of x axis. The F2 force which is making an angle of 45 degree with a positive x axis. And there is a third force which is of magnitude 650 Newton. We are not being given with the angle but we are being given with the sides of a right angle triangle. So we can calculate this. Here you can see the F3 force is acting downward. So we can shift this F3 force along its line of action of force like this way. Now let's start with the calculations. We have been given the magnitude of F1 which is 900 Newton. The magnitude of F2 is also given which is 750 Newton. The direction is given and the magnitude of F3 force is 650 Newton. So using this triangle we can calculate the angle which this force is making using this right angle triangle. So on doing calculations it will be 36.87 degrees. How I did it? Because you can see that here the perpendicular side is 3 and base is 4. So using 10 theta formula 10 inverse of 3 by 4 will give you the value of 36.87. So if this angle is 36.87 so this will also be 36.87 because the opposite angles are same since this angle and this angle will be same. So to move on further we need to determine the x components of all these forces and also we need to determine the y component of all these forces once we will have x and y components then we can determine the x component of the resultant force and the y component of the resultant force since the x component of the resultant force is equal to the summation of the x component of all the forces acting on it. So x component of F1 would be 900 cos 0 would be 1. The x component of 750 Newton would be 750 multiplied by cos 45. The x component of F3 force will be 650 cos 36.87. So adding all these, we are going to get the X component of the resultant force as 1950.33 Newton. Similarly, the Y component of the resultant force would be equal to the summation of the Y component of all forces acting on this plate. So Y component of F1 would be 0 because sine 0 is 0. The Y component of F2 force would be 750 sine 45 and the Y component of F3 force will be negative because it's downward 650 multiplied by sine 36.87. Keep in mind that we have considered the upward forces as positive for the Y axis forces for and for the x-axis forces we have considered the rightward forces as positive. So from here we will have the y component of the resultant force as 140.33 Newton. Since now we have the x component and y component of the resultant force the magnitude now can be calculated by the formula that we have learned from the basics of the composition of forces which is the magnitude of the resultant force is equal to in the under root rx square plus r y square. So now putting the value of rx and r y we are going to get the magnitude of r as 1955 newton that is one of the answer. We are also being asked to calculate the direction of the resultant force. So for the direction of the resultant force we are going to use the formula of 10 theta where theta is the direction of the resultant force equal to the y component of the resultant force divided by the x component of the resultant force. So we have both. So on doing calculation we are going to get the value of theta as 4.12 degrees. So it means the resultant force would be over here. Obviously this is not according to scale. This angle would be 4.12 degrees. So this is how the calculation of the resultant force is done when we are being given with the different forces acting on any body with their magnitudes and directions being given. We can calculate the magnitude of the resultant and also its direction using this method we just have described. So this is all from this video where we have learned about 
the magnitude of the resultant force and its direction. That's all from this video. Thank you for watching this video.